hello friends uh, good evening so after the discussion of the basics of functional dependency uh, this topic that i am going to discuss today is a discussion about database normalization it's one of the very interesting and important topic in database management system and all of you must prepare this topic very uh, intuitively and uh, uh, let's uh, try to see how this database normalization is uh using and what are the advantage of using the normalization process and why we use normalization process why we require this process uh, in our database management system obviously i'm telling the in the discussion should be uh, based on the concept of rdbm relation dependence please remember this thing always right? so let's start with a discussion database normalization so what is normalization what is database normalization so database normalization is the process of reorganizing data in a database is very important we actually we actually tries to reorganize the data existing data it may be in the raw format okay data are generally collected from the external environment in a raw format so those data may be in unorganized form unstructured form so we are trying to reorganize the data so normally is a process of reorganizing the data or uh, making an unstructured data into a structured form in a database and it can do that by the help of two ways the first way is that it actually removes the redundancy of the data and data dependency are logical another one is it, it removes the data redundancy and remove the uh, anomalies of the data right so we can check another data uh, data normalization uh, database normalization definition this is the definition uh, so a process of organizing data that we have already told to avoid data redundancy data redundancy means data duplicacy that means there should not exist all the data should be unique all the tuples should be unique of each other there should not be repeated amount of information because we know that if there is a repeated amount of information then there is memory loss of time and uh, the database normalization process will be complex and cumbersome so this is the one of the uh, uh, one of the goal of database normalization another goal is that to remove the anomaly Okay, anomaly is one of the very interesting concept in database uh, system. Anomaly, I will discuss about the anomalies uh, along with this uh, discussion. So there are three sort of anomalies exist that all these three sort of anomalies but take care by data normalization process. Insertion anomaly, update anomaly, and deletion anomaly. Right. So a process of organizing data into tables in such a way that the results of using the database are always unambiguous and as intended. such normalization is intrinsic to relational database theory what i have already told we will consider rdbms in this case and it may have the effect of duplicating data within a database and often result in the creation of additional rules so database normalization is generally used uh, to decompose the table uh, i already show how to decompose the table during the session of uh, lossy decomposition and lossless decomposition lecture in my class and uh, uh database normalization is actually a process of decompose a table into some sub tables uh, based on which we can remove the uh, problem of data redundancy as well as anomalies so let's try to uh, start a discussion about anomalies what is anomalies data anomalies so what i have already told regarding normalization is a process of no information redundancy and no anomalies so let's start with what is anomaly anomaly is a problem obviously it's a problem that's why normalization normalization we are using to remove that problem redundancy is a problem anomaly is like redundancy anomaly is also a problem it's very interesting please remember some uh, several questions are coming from this anomaly so you have to identify each and every anomaly individually right so problems that can occur in poorly planned unnormalized databases where all the data is stored in one table a flat file that is called anomaly now there are three types of anomalies let's check insert anomaly delete anomaly update anomaly let's give me one examples of each and individual anomalies and your conception will be clear an insert anomaly occurs when certain attributes cannot be inserted into a database without the presence of other attributes that means uh, we cannot insert an attribute as we want in the database uh, without the presence of other attributes suppose there is other attributes are not present and we are trying to insert a another attribute to it as for example suppose uh, student name is not there but i i am trying to insert a student roll number student name age any other attribute of the student is not present but i am trying to insert a new roll number of the student so that is invalid uh, to 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 insert a new roll number to create a new roll number which is invalid which does not have any student information along with it so that is the insertion anomaly let give me an example this example has been given here so here we have 
build a new room we are trying to build a new room suppose i, I am i am extending a room of my college and i am trying to build a new room b123 but i cannot insert b123 room number here in this room call room column or room attribute because we don't i don't know the room size i don't know the limit of the room i don't know the tutor name who will teach inside the room and i don't know the course number which course will be taught in inside the room so all the other information are not present i don't know that's why i cannot insert that extra information there is actually extra information there so it's, it's called insertion anomaly okay it's an anomaly type of problem we cannot insert the particular record because the other attributes uh, which are required to support that particular record are absent right now the second type of anomaly is delete anomaly the delete anomaly exists when certain attributes are lost because of the deletion of the other attributes that means we delete one attribute and based on the deletion of that attribute the other attribute which which supposed to carry some significant significant information will also lost along with it so that is in deletion anomaly let me give me one example the same table we are using same number of columns so here if we suppose i want to remove this course course number 351 see if i am going to remove this course it will not create effect on a tutor because smith is already taught in other room in other course so smith exists here okay if i will delete this one now if i will delete this course number obviously this room has been this room information has been entirely deleted from the table there is no other columns or no other uh, tuples con contains this room information so if after deletion if anyone watch the table or see the table uh, he or she cannot find that is there any room c320 exist in the college or not he has no idea about it right so in the same way room size and n limit is not very important but if we delete this one the entire information of this room has been deleted so which implies the corresponding course will also get deleted right so this is the thing now uh, deletion anomaly now the last anomaly is updation anomaly or update anomaly which exists when one or more instances of the duplicated data is updated but not at all so this anomaly i have already discussed in my previous classes if you remember it so suppose we are considering the same table now room number h940 has been improved okay it is now of room size is equal to 500 room number h940 room size was 400 now it is it becomes 500 for up so i'm updating the room size for updating a single entity we have to update all other columns where room h940 is present so suppose i'm updating this this one 355 the room size of the course corresponding 355 500 but i forget to update this one so there is a mismatch of the record so this is called updation analysis this problem the mismatch of the record is a problem same room but size are different in, in two different tuples or in, in two different records so it's a updation anomaly am i clear so this is all about the anomalies let's return back to the discussion of normalization okay so these anomalies uh, so I, I have already discussed what are the various type of anomalies and these sort of anomalies can be handled by normalization as well as it will handle the problem of redundancy as well now how many types of normalizations are there very important there are total four types of normalization first normal form second normal form third normal form voice code normal form fourth normal form fifth normal form so there is unnormalized form of database is there before this first normal form and the input will be there into first normal form then second normal form third normal form voice code normal form fourth normal form, fifth normal form and the output will be a, a normalized database but all these five normal forms does not guarantee please remember this statement all these five normal forms does not guarantee to fully normalize your input database please remember all these five normal forms does not guarantee to fully normalize your input database but we can reduce the problem of redundancy and reduce the problem of anomaly we cannot remove but we can reduce please remember nowhere in the in, in any book it can be re, it, it, it means said we can re, remove uh fully but we can reduce by the help of this five normal form so let's discuss individual normal form one by one it's very important the first one is the first normal form the most basic normal form so the first normal form says that it actually avoid the multi-valued attribute suppose your table contains an attribute which contains more than one value in each and every record so this multi-valued attributes uh sort of things is fallen into the first normal form and we should avoid this thing because multiple attributes is creating a problem of uh, redundancy 
as well as the problem of uh, anomaly so that's why we are going to create uh, so we are going to remove those things uh, by the help of decomposing the table how we can do that let give me one example so first normal form suppose the table name is table product okay so if you see here which one is the multiple attribute the three attributes product id color and price obviously product id is the um, your uh, primary key here right so each and every value are unique in this product id now this table product color and this price is there so color is a multiple attribute right black red so you can see from the single tuple or single record will contain more than one value the same thing will be repeated in the record number four right so we try to avoid this thing by decomposing these things into two separate tables and please remember we always try to decompose based on the primary key of the table because i during the lecture of lossy and lossless decomposition what is the role of primary key during the decomposition okay i have already discussed so i think your conception will be clear why we do that so we can uh, do the decomposition like product id and color to make a sub table and another sub table product id and price okay product id and price and product id and color so based on that so one product id has one color so uh, if product id is one so that product id one has two color black and red so one can be represented by black and another one record can be represented by red obviously these two are unique in two cases because if we combine these two attributes so we will get a unique record one comma black and one comma red these two are unique not redundant clear in the same way these two are unique four green and four blue not redundant so by the help of decomposing the table we will uh, remove the problem of redundancy or multi value dependency multiple attributes okay now uh, let's try to give one more example to clear your concept uh, in this slide uh, it is providing one more example so this is an example studio director and movies so the marvel studio has a director kevin page which has two movies the avenger and captain america so uh, in the same way uh, from this table you can understand this is a multi value attribute which contains more than one value so how we can uh, divide it so we can divide or decompose the table into two sub tables like studio and movies one table and director and movies into another table right so studio and movies in one table so it, it actually combines and after decomposition it will make a joining of this table they have shown the decomposition and joining into a single table right so studio director studio director and studio movie right so in this way it is in first normal form now second normal form what is second normal form to understand the concept of second normal form we have to first understand the concept of prime attribute and non prime attribute so prime attribute means attribute which is a part of primary key is called a prime attribute and the attribute which is not part of primary key is called a non prime attribute in more uh, precisely we can say an attribute which is not part of candidate key is a non prime attribute and the prime prime attributes are part of key attribute and non key attribute so candidate key and non candidate key. so if we follow second normal form then we then every non prime attribute should be fully functionally dependent it's very important should be fully functionally dependent ffd should be fully functionally dependent on prime key attribute and there should not be any partial dependency so in in your relation every non prime key attribute should be fully functionally dependent on prime attribute there shouldn't be any partial dependency partial dependency means partial dependency say that uh, suppose in 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 a partial dependency is one another type of functional dependency where not all the attributes uh, are dependent on the determinant but some of the attributes uh, based on some of the attributes or determinant a dependent can be derived let me give me one example your conception will be clear suppose the same uh, table we are considering studio movie budget and city so these are the records or tables so here are the primary key what are the primary key obviously giving underline so these two are the primary key studio and movie right so and city depends only on the studio not on the whole key so this is not in second normal form why it is not in second normal form because uh, if we if we draw the functional dependency from here so we can do that how we can draw old scheme studio movie budget city and new schema uh, new scheme movie studio budget so we will divide movie and studio and budget and studio and city into separate tables so if you check in the first case uh, So city can be easily defined. City uh, prime key attribute. This to the prime key attribute. So city, the New York, can be easily defined only by the movie name Avenger or studio. So not movie name, sorry, studio. Only by the studio name. So city can be defined by studio. Because Marvel studio present in New York. 
situated in new york so by the help of only studio name it is enough to define city right in the same way by dceu it is enough by the studio name to define its corresponding city gotham right but our objection say that all the non prime key attributes should be fully functionally dependent on the prime key attribute that means these two are the non prime key attributes so this should be fully functionally dependent on prime key attribute that means all these two keys should be together represent the city we take the help of both the keys to represent the city but here one key will be enough to represent the information city like studio represent the city so this this enter form is not in second normal form right enter table is not in second normal so that's why we decompose it how we can decompose studio and city 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 we will take in separate decomposition table so in this table if we see city is fully dependent on studio without studio city city is a non prime key attribute and studio is a prime key attribute city is fully dependent on studio because i have left i, I have removed the movie into separate table so movie studio and budget so budget is totally dependent on movie and studio both so movie comma studio implies budget okay the so fully functionally dependent the prime non prime key attribute to the prime key attribute and again studio implies city so city is a non prime key attribute fully functionally dependent on prime prime key attribute studio so in this way we can decompose this this table which will which is not a fully functionally dependent table into two sub tables which is fully functionally dependent of each other clear so this is about second normal form now checking the third normal form what is third normal form the third normal form it totally depends on the concept of transitive dependency as i have already discussed during my de functional dependency lecture of trans transitive dependency what is trans trans transitive functional dependency in, and third, third normal form is represented by the transitive dependency so a, a relation is said to be in third normal form if it already present in second normal form second normal form a relation is said to be second normal form it, if it is already present in first normal form and it every non prime key attribute should be fully functional dependent on prime key, prime key attribute that, that, that then Then we can say the relation is present in second normal form. In the same way, relation R is present in third normal form. It, if it satisfies second normal form, or, or table must be in second normal form. As well as the transitive functional dependence of non-prime key attribute on super key should be removed. It should not be present there. Any transitive dependency. So X is a super key of table, and Y is a prime key. So please remember, in case of third normal form, X implies Y, where X is super key. The super key is not a candidate key, not a primary key. Super key is a super key, which I already discussed. Candidate key is a subset of super key, and primary key is a subset of candidate key. And Y is a primary, key, is a prime attribute of a table. Now, if we look this relationship, book ID, junior ID, and junior type. So price. So we can say book ID is uh, book ID implies junior ID. So From the book ID, we can represent general ID. Book ID is the prime key attribute here, and from general ID, you can represent general type. So from book ID, you can directly represent general type. So transitive dependency exists here. So this relation is not in third normal form if transitive dependency exists. So to remove the transitive dependency, we decompose this table into two sub tables again. So these are the two sub tables: book ID, general ID, and price. Okay, and general ID and general type. So general ID and general type will be enough here. The general type to Represent by the help of general ID here. General ID is the primary key, and general type is non-prime key. Here, book ID and general ID is the primary key, and price is non-prime key. So this no uh, transitive dependency they exist in these two relations. So we achieve the third normal form. Here, here no functional dependence, no fully functional dependence, no no partial dependence exists. So we satisfy the second normal form as well as no transitive dependence exists. We satisfy the third normal form as well. Okay, so third normal form a relation is is. Is in third normal form if if it satisfies second normal form as well as no transitive dependency exists, right? Now the fourth one is one of the important ones, Boyle's chord normal form. It is in between third normal form and fourth normal form. It is also called three point five normal, three and half normal form. Okay, BCNF is stricter than third normal form. The question is coming. BCNF is stricter than third normal form. Explain it or give your justification. That means that this statement will be taken as a question and explain this statement that. With the justification, it's very important concept. Why BCN BCNF is stronger than third normal form, stricter than third normal form. A table complies with BCNF if it is in third normal form. So if you remember the third normal form definition, it says that if X tends to Y present in third normal form, so in third normal form it is in second normal form, and for each functional dependency X tends to Y, at least 
this condition hold x is the super key of the table and y is the prime attribute of the table now here x is the super key please remember this thing but in case of bcna x must be a primary key x should be the super key of the table okay it should be okay. in case of third normal form x may be may be primary key may not be primary key but in case of uh, bcna x must be a primary key in case of uh, this relationship x tends to y x implies y so in this case student course and teacher if we take this example so here key attributes will consider student and course as a key attribute and functional dependency exists like student comma course implies teacher so teacher can be identified based on student and course and teacher implies course but here teacher implies course this is not a valid uh, functional dependency why because boy scott normal form said this is said x tends to y if the relationship exists and x must be a super key especially x must be a prime key so uh, if student and course are the super key here okay this this relationship is a correct one but this relationship does not exist why because this teacher and course here teacher implies course from the teacher name we can imply course but teacher is not a super key here right teacher is not a super key here so from the teacher you cannot imply course right teacher is not a super key but determines courses so that's why this relation is not in boy scott normal form to make it boy scott normal form we have to again decompose the relation into two sub relations student and course okay student and course and then course and teacher course and teacher okay so now student implies course is a is, a, is present in third boy scott normal form and course implies teacher is also present in boy scott normal form so our relation r is said to be in boy scott normal form if it is in third normal form it, it must present in third normal form as well as in a, in a functional dependency uh, it exists a functional dependency x implies y by x is, it should be a super key of, or a prime key of the attribute okay now fourth normal form this fourth and fifth normal form these two type of normal form is totally depends on a special type of functional dependence dependency which we have already discussed in case of uh, functional dependency lecture uh, that is a multi value dependency if you forget please go to that lecture and uh, see what is multi value dependency so in case of multi value dependency one attribute um, depends on the another attribute with multiple values okay so fourth normal form is a level of database normalization where there are no non trivial multi value dependency other than a candidate key it builds on the first three normal form first second third and the boy scott normal form it states that in addition to a table meeting the requirements of bcna it must not contain more than one value dependency so in this case so one student can have multiple hobbies so here the key is supposed will consider uh, student major hobby which is three attribute of three keys and multiple dependency exists like uh, students implies uh, multiple implies multi implies because multiple dependencies so it, it can be represented by the help of two uh, sequential arrow major and hobby so uh, one student can have more than one major and one student may have more than one hobby so it's a multi value dependency exists so if we decompose the so student and major and student and hobby then and based on the student if we decompose this table into two sub tables student and major is one table and first sub table and student and hobby is another sub table so we can uniquely define or uniquely define the multiple dependencies student multiple implies major and student multi value implies hobby is possible student implies hobby and student implies major so we can uh, remove the multi value dependence so this is all about the normal forms in fifth normal form uh, i suggest you to study at your home try to understand it and uh, i will give you one assignment over the fifth normal form in uh, future so try to study try to try, try to understand the fifth normal form at your home and uh, if you have any question you can ask me in the comment box and thank you very much for listening the lecture